Hi there, my name is Lauren Prather and I work for Baylor Flowers in Waco, Texas and I had a few people ask me to do a tutorial on some prom corsages that I posted pictures of. Um, this is the first type of tutorial I've ever made so I'm sorry if it's not um, the best quality but I'm going to try and um, help you guys out. So I might be doing this in some segments um, and we're just going to try it and see how it goes. So. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is the tools that you're going to use. So um, I always do um, floral Oasis floral adhesive on all of my corsages. I don't do any wiring and taping on my corsages unless it's a pin-on. Um, and since prom doesn't really, we don't around here the girls don't like pin-on corsages. It's all wrist corsages or small little bouquets that they carry. So um, so I use that exclusively. I have tried other glue. Um, I've tried this brand, Atlantic brand, Clear, because I was like, oh, it's clear. Um, I did not like it. I just, um, it smells really odd. Um, the fumes kind of got to me. And also I just don't feel like it dries as fast. Um, I feel like the Oasis really bonds um, really quickly and it's just it's just a more trusted product for me. So whatever works for you, but this is the, the kind that I like the best. Um, so the second thing um, that I always have out when I make corsages is of course my floral scissors. I use um, these um, from Chickamasa. I really love them. Um, I also have a knife just in case I need it. I'm not a big knife user, but you never know when you might need a knife. Um, and then my um, wire snips. Um, I only like to cut wire with my wire cutters. I don't like using my floral scissors to cut wire because it dulls my floral scissors. Um, some people will cut anything with their floral scissors. They'll cut wire with it. I just don't like to do that because I like to keep these nice and sharp for the flowers. So um, always keep my wire cutters nearby when I'm making a corsage. And um, I also have the Oasis Bunch Cutter. Um, these are good to cut wire um, as well. I like to have a designated set for cutting wire only. Um, and then we have some other sets in the shop that are actually for, you know, cutting like woody stems and whatnot, but these are for wire only. Um, so that's the rundown of the tools. Uh, first I'm going to show you how I make the, um, the cuff out of the deco flat wire. I'm talking about this, this wire. Um, it's, I guess, probably like, what, an inch and a half thick. It's like about the size of a number nine ribbon. Um, and you can get this in different colors. I, my favorite one that we had, I don't have anymore because I used it all up, was like a textured flat wire. Um, but I do have that in gold. I can show you what that looks like. This is the gold. I don't use this very often because I feel like this gold is a little bit too yellowy for most of the girls around here. They usually like more of a champagne, antique type gold um, rather than this bold yellow gold. So I don't use this super often, um, but the silver that I had that was textured like this, I, I loved that, I used it all up. So what I do when I'm making a, um, a cuff out of the de deco wire and I believe I learned this maybe from John Hosek I couldn't tell you for sure but he's like a teleflora educator I will kind of measure it to my wrist I have a very tiny wrist I will say that um, so I always make sure it's a little bit big I'll cut it with my bunch cutter straight across and then oh one tool I forgot to mention that you need is the little jewelry tool. Oops, almost dropped it. This is like a needle nose plier, but they don't have the um, little threads right here for the grippy. It's just like a jewelry um, pliers. I don't know what they're called. Um, and then I will take these and kind of turn it in 
turn the sharp edges inward and just kind of curl it over itself so that the um, the wearer will not get poked by those sharp edges. And, you know, I try to make it look pretty. It doesn't have to look beautiful, but you know, just make it look as pretty as you can. And then I turn it in on itself a couple of times. This one, I ended up making it way too big, probably because I'm nervous because I'm on camera. But as you can see, it would fit someone. Um, and you can always, that's the deal with these two, you can always roll it extra. So like I could keep rolling this and it would fit me. If I just kept rolling it in on itself. And then, yeah, see? And then you just kind of clamp it on to the person's wrist and it will stay on there. Like even this one that I made, probably for a small child and then I don't know what happened. Even though it's too small, like if I do this with my arm, it's not gonna come off. Like that's what I love about these deco wire cuffs is that they stay in place. They do not move around. Um, it's the one thing that I really don't like about the like diamond wristlets. Um, they're beautiful, but they slippy slide around. If anybody has a tiny wrist, they always complain about you know the bracelets not staying on tight enough. So that's why I always try to recommend the cuff to either people who are really tiny or maybe they're a little bit bigger and normal things, you know, if they're really tiny or they're a little bit bigger, normal, normal, doesn't really fit because it's either too loose or too tight and so if you do the cuff you can make it um, fit the person just right so um, that's the first little segment I'm gonna end it there and uh, we'll show you the next step in a minute okay so in the next little segment um, I'm going to show you how to attach your flowers to the cuff so I like to get my Oasis floral adhesive glue And I like to just put a little bit on the top of where I'm going to put my flowers. I'm just going to put a thin little layer of glue all over the top of my cuff. Now with Oasis, they say that it's good to let it like sit for a minute, become a little bit tacky. Then I'm gonna get like a tiny little bed of moss, just sheet moss, and I'm gonna apply it to my little layer of glue. And I'm just gonna kind of firmly press that in a little bit. Just press it in. And it will adhere pretty quickly. Okay. So that is about it for that. It's really simple. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my focal flower. Now I'm using just kind of like leftover flowers from our cooler like that didn't either you know didn't make it into an arrangement or maybe they just got a little too old whatever so don't judge my um, flower choice. It's just kind of I'm just trying to do something um, without, you know, costing a lot of money. So I'm gonna use this ranunculus. I think it's a couple weeks old. It's been in the cooler. Sadly, I didn't get to go to a party. So it's a little spent, but you know, it's still pretty for our video. And I'm just gonna cut that right at the base of the flower. So there is like nothing left. And I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna cover that whole bottom of the flower with my Oasis floral adhesive. Just put that on there. I kind of just like to do it like almost like a paintbrush. Now I'm gonna blow on it a little bit. 
kind of start to activate that tackiness. And you can put a little bit of glue on the top of your moss as well. And you're just gonna firmly press that down onto your little bed of moss. Now it might take a little bit for it to adhere, and that's okay. I mean, this glue doesn't bond like instant, instant, um, but it will. And once you start adding in other elements, it's going to become even more um, secure. Okay. So for now, it's on there. That's all we got so far. And um, so now I would start adding in some of my other elements. Um, I kind of saved a whole bunch of little bits of leaves and stuff this week, or at the end of this week, because I knew that I was going to try to make this video. So um, I've got just a whole bunch of Israeli rusk. Um, I always say the wrong thing. Italian ruscus. <laughs> got a bunch of these. I've got some little pieces of pittosporum. I have some bits of brunia. I have some bits of parvifolia and seeded eucalyptus. And I've got some um, wax flower. So I'm just going to start adding it in. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can get this a little bit closer. Like I said, I'm not super expert at this right now, but we're going to do our best here okay all right so when I start putting in leaves I'm going to just kind of coat the tip of my leaf with my oasis glue on both sides at the tip and then I'm just going to start kind of placing them in where I want them to go. Okay. You can put some kind of coming out, extending down, you know, kind of decide what shape you want this to go on the person's arm. Is it going to be on, do you want it to go diagonal? Do you want it to go horizontal? Do you want it to go up and down? Um, I tend to try to, I, I tend to make mine more on a diagonal. I'm kind of, I like diagonal. It's one of my favorite things. So my hair is asymmetrical. My corsages are asymmetrical. I don't know. Um, so that's just me, but whatever you prefer to do, now I'm going to add in some Italian ruscus. And y'all, I did not really have a plan for this, and that's kind of how I do most of my corsages, um, unless they like specifically want like a picture. I just kind of go with it and let the design just kind of create itself. Um, but you know, whatever you're comfortable with, if you like doing stuff from pictures, you know, that's great. Um, I think that it's good to figure out your, your style and, and what makes you comfortable and go with that. Some of these pit leaves are kind of little and I usually have a few bigger ones, but You can also make like a little puddle of the glue on your, I like to get, I like to take these, this is like a, a piece of paper from the like little price tag stickers and I will save these when the price tags, when we're out of price tags and I use them as my, where, uh, where I make my little puddles of glue because after when the glue dries, it just like rolls right off. It's pretty fun. So anyway, just a little tidbit for you. 
So you can like make a little puddle of glue and then just like dip your leaves or whatever in there. Some people like to do that better than putting it on the actual leaf. So it's kind of starting to come together. <clears throat> I am going to um, add in some, I'm going to add in some of the seeded eucalyptus. Um, oh, shoot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Okay. So if you follow Passion Flower Sue or Hitomi Gilliam or I don't know who else, um, you might have heard of their little hydration chamber or whatever they call it. So I pulled these little florets off of Delphinium like yesterday and I put them in what Passion Flower Sue Sue McCleary, I think that's her last name, um, calls a hydration chamber. So I just put the florets in there, spritzed them with water, covered them with um, a wet paper towel. I used a corsage box. I would really more suggest a like a Tupperware or a like airtight container. Um, but all I had up here was a corsage box. So I put them in a corsage box and then a Ziploc bag and it keeps them hydrated. Um, like overnight. So I'm actually gonna add in some of these florets because I forgot about them. Um, so when I do the delphinium florets, I just kind of cut them off like pretty short. And I leave a little bit of their little tiny stem. And I'm just gonna coat this whole thing with a bit of glue. in there kind of at the base of my ranunculus okay and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side so I broke off a whole bunch of these florets because they were too long for the arrangement that I had to put them in and I just saved them all so some of them are not very pretty but I'm gonna use the prettier ones. If I have a stem that fits into the glue, I just stick it right in there. And, you know, typically I probably wouldn't do just one um, ranunculus on this, but since I'm, like I said, I'm using kind of leftover flowers that are kind of spent, I'm not really paying super close to attention to all that. I'm just kind of trying to do it to, to show you guys how it comes together. So I just added that little detail of the seeded eucalyptus <clears throat> just to kind of create some interest. I like to use a lot of texture and um, variety in my corsages, like especially if somebody wants one that's like all white, that's like, I really don't like all white um, because I just think prom should be fun and exciting. And if you're doing all white, to me, that's just kind of boring. So I really try to lead them away from that, but some people just don't, you know, want to branch out and get crazy. They, you know, they just want to be like fly under the radar. Um, so all that to say, if I am doing something that's all white, I will try to, we're all monochromatic. I try to, you know, create some interest by using different um, 
textures and different blooms and um, things like that. So this seeded uke is, I don't know, I might, I might have already just said that, I'm sorry. I'm repeating myself. I'm here all by myself, I don't have anyone else to talk to. chamber too. I didn't. I will also sometimes use the leaves that come off of the seeded eucalyptus or the silver dollar eucalyptus to add that kind of a silvery gray green to the look especially if that's you know kind of their vibe that they're going for have a little tiny ranunculus nubbin. So I am going to use that. seated on that side so also I don't know if you can see I'm trying to cover up my mechanics down here so eventually I want most of this to be covered so you can't really tell how is that attached I don't want people to figure that out I mean if they can figure it out then I'm not doing my job very well so um, I like to leave it a mystery so um, we're gonna try to cover those mechanics. So that's part of the reason that, I'm um, also part of the reason that I'm putting in leaves and these little bits of seeded uke as like a little bit of texture. So yeah, you never want it to show like where it's attached. They, you know, that's that should all be kind of like very mysterious. You don't wanna give away your secrets. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of seeded, uh, seeded eucalyptus leaf to this side since I put it on the other side. Um, you know, you have to balance everything out. got to um, one thing that I always talk to people that I'm training is um, make sure you're implementing your principles of design your color your balance um, line all those things are very important in when you're designing want it to look like it's purposeful you know not like you just threw it together that's like one of my pet peeves is when they, people come in and say can you just throw this together for me I'm like no I don't that's not what I do like I'm not somebody who throws something together I am an artiste thank you very much so um, anyway just sharing um, I think I'm gonna finish this off with do I want to finish this off with my I think I'm going to use a, a little bit of this Brunia. 
don't even know what these things are called. It, they didn't. They didn't have the berries. It's the the non-buried part of the silver brunia. actually um, painted some of the silver brunia for an arrangement that we did. We painted it kind of lavender. It turned out really cool. And then after that, oop, after that, we painted some like this hot pink color. It looked really cool. I like experimenting with things. Sometimes I have to like put something in there to support another um, I just lost my word element there it is another element of the design and that's okay that's totally okay sometimes you have to do that you need to like put in a little leaf or something to to give it a little support and a little oomph. All right, I'm trying to see how long this video is. If you're sticking with me, you're amazing. Um, sorry, like I said, haven't ever done this before. So I had no idea how long it would take or any of that. love all the little detail work on corsages and boutonnieres so for me it's like I could sit and spend you know forever just working on one putting all the little details on but sometimes it's all about speed and time and what you can do and you got to get it done so it's one thing I like about these ones that don't have any of the ribbon and stuff is that they are much more um, time friendly. You don't have to spend all that extra time with all the ribbon and whatnot. So yeah, um, this one turned out pretty funky, not gonna lie, but like I said, I didn't really have a plan for it and I'm using kind of trash flowers. So, um, wouldn't say it's my best work ever, but you kind of get the idea. We're really just looking at mechanics here and not anything else. Um, you know, you could always add in some little bling you know if if your customer likes bling and they want to add a little bit of that you can always do that still um, if I had some berries or something I think that would look really cool in here um, I don't have any um, but overall I don't think it's horrible So 
you can see it's all in there. Okay. Somebody asked me what the back of it looks like. The back of it looks like just like that. Now, if I had um, more mechanics exposed, I would definitely try to cover all that up. But as you can see, it's pretty covered. Okay. All right, well, I hope that this has helped someone. <laughs> Even just one person would be great. Um, if there are any other questions that y'all have for me, please feel free to private message me. Um, I'm happy to help in any way I can. Um, if you're ever in Waco, Texas, come and see us. All right, bye guys. I almost forgot one thing I wanted to show you. Um, when you are cleaning up your glue, Mine usually tends to get kind of clumpy at the end because I use it kind of like a paintbrush. So I just clean off that excess with like a paper towel or something. Make sure I get as much off of it as I can. Then when you get it all cleaned up and you've got your lid, take a little bit of your leaf shine, whatever kind of leaf shine you use, I'm sure it's fine, and spray it into the lid. Just give it a little bit of spray and then put your lid on and that will make it easier to open up when you come to the next time that you use it so it's not all gloopy and sticky somebody else taught me that I did not come up with that on my own um, and then I also wanted to show you taking the glue off of your little paper it just comes right off. and you can use it to take the other bits off because it sticks to itself. Anyway, just another little tidbit. All right, bye. Okay, apparently I'm really bad and forgetful about things. I also forgot to tell you what I do with it after I'm finished designing it. Mm. Okay, so I usually use um, Floralife Finishing Touch and I just spray it a few times and let it dry outside of the cooler. So I'll go ahead and put it in its corsage box. When I do the cuff bracelets, I usually put some type of cardstock or like cardboard so it kind of will fit around the, the cuff um, when I put it in the corsage box or maybe put some crinkle cut in with it. Um, that way it kind of stands up. If it falls over, it's not going to be the end of the world, but um, so I will let it dry outside the cooler. Usually if I'm doing a bunch of corsages, I'll let it dry about the length of time that it takes me to do another corsage um, before putting it in the cooler. So, okay, that's what I do to finish it off. Um, I guess you could use Crowning Glory if that's your preference. Um, we prefer Finishing Touch. Um, that's just up to you. Um, all right, I think that's the last thing, okay. Bye.